Hello everyone and welcome back to Revy Snippets, great tips you can earn in just a few minutes. Today's video is brought to you by Cat File Explorer, the easiest way to see, manage and clean up AutoCAD files in Revit. Get your free copy today by following the link in this video description. In today's video, let's see a quick and easy trick to obtain room data for your MEP equipment from Revit Links. As you may know already, trying to schedule objects by Revit Rooms will not work if the objects and the rooms are from different models. Such as here, where I'm editing my MEP model, but all the rooms are from this architecture link. Anyway, thanks to our little trick, if I select any object in the model now, for example, this air terminal here, you can see under properties, we have room name and room number, and these parameters, they show the right information because here I have this room from this Revit link. When I try to select it by tap clicking, you can see there that's room number 314, just like what we have for the properties of my MEP objects right there. And the best thing is, this wasn't manually filled in. We can indeed very quickly obtain room data from all of these linked rooms and push that data into any MEP objects we want to select. And once that's done, you will see something as nice as this, a full Revit schedule of objects in your MEP model with room data already filled out. It could be a duct schedule, could be air terminal like this, or you can even do a multi-category schedule containing the required parameters, room name and number. Maybe do a quick sorting there by family name. And you can see there, all my objects are still here, properly classified into rooms according to data from the linked file. So let me show you now how to do this. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin. I have here just a typical Revit MEP file with the architecture link in the background. If I now select it and hide it just for a moment, you can see in this model here, we actually only have MEP objects like ducts, pipes, cable trays, and so on. So here, how you can quickly obtain room data for these objects. Firstly, let's be clear where the room is coming from. If I now go to a section, you can see there, when I select the architectural link, I can see my rooms are selected. So that's where the rooms are. They are in this Revit link from the architects. If I now just go ahead and make a schedule, maybe by multi-category and of the right face, I can now select just to see the family and type names of my objects along with room information. How about we try room name and room number. Let's sort this by family type and do OK. As you can see there, we have all the objects listed in this schedule, but the room name and number columns are both empty. This is typical because we don't actually have these rooms in our file. They actually come from the Revit link and because they are in the link, Revit cannot automatically associate our MEP objects to the right rooms. So this is where we need to use the trick. Firstly, we need to create a custom parameters to hold our room data for these objects. Let's go to manage and then choose shape parameters. I want to do this as a shape parameters because then we can include this parameter in the schedules and maybe in tags if you need that in the future. In here, I just have now an example shape parameter file, so it's empty. Let's firstly create a group, call this one room data. And in this group here, we can say room name make this a text parameter, do OK, and then repeat this process to create room number. You can of course go for any other attributes or parameter names you like. Just make sure they are of the right parameter type. I want to go with text, so let's do that. So I have two there, let's do OK. For the next step, we can switch to still under manage, but this time go for project parameters. And in here now, let's choose add, select shape parameter, choose select. And now the two parameters we created from before, 
let's choose one of them now room name and maybe apply this parameter to all categories make sure that's an instance parameter because we want this parameter value to vary for each object depending on which room that object is located let's do ok now and then do the same thing to add the second parameter this time let's do room number one more time check all the categories or you can go for fewer categories if you like for now for simplicity let's do them all make sure the parameter is instance and do ok again and then one more time having done that if i now select any object in the model for example let's say we try this air terminal here you can see there under properties under text we have now room name and then room number now for the next step let's see how we can quickly fill out these two parameters using the room data from this architecture revit link frankly speaking it's not something you can easily do in revit so the trick here is to use a revit plugin called rv room link i have it here under the add-ins tab under rv boost is this one here rv room link if you haven't got this plugin yourself simply go down to this video description and follow the link there to get your free copy of this plugin for now i have got it installed already so let's click it to run it here we go as soon as you run the plugin it will scan the model to find all of the links you have here and also any object categories in use so if i now look up here i can see there's one link it's called architecture and this is where I want to get the room data from. So let's select this link just like this. You can also select this first line, which is the main model we have here, the active one we are working on. Just in case it has rooms inside, you can also tick this box to make sure the room detection algorithm can look at both files to get the optimal result. For now, I know there's no rooms in this MEP file here. So let's just untick this box. Next step, if we go a bit down here, we can choose to select which elements should receive room data. There are two ways to do this. You can either select them by categories, any of those here. Or if you want to do just for a few elements, you can try this. Close the plugin first. Select the elements you want to get room data for. Go back to Add-ins, run RV room link again. And now, if you select only selected elements, the room detection process will only update the elements you have selected before, which are now highlighted in red. Anyway, for this time, I want to go for selection by category. So let's switch it back to this mode here. And now you can either go through this list and tick any boxes for any categories you want to include. Or if you are as lazy as I am, just do select all like this to get all of them in one go. Next step. We need to specify how we want room data to be extracted and written to our objects. Firstly, we need to be clear about phases. There are two phases here to consider. The phase of the rooms we want to extract data from and the phase of the elements we want to write room data to. Firstly, for the rooms, I can go to here now and set the phase for required rooms. In this case, I know there are on phase new construction, so let's pick it from here. These phases on this list are taken directly from the link, by the way. So make sure you select the right one from here. Next step, because rooms in this link, they have many parameters. We now need to specify which parameter should we extract data from. So let's go to the second drop down menu now. And for this time, let's go for room name. Next step, we want to select the elements parameter to receive room data. This will be the parameter of these objects. Let's go to here now. And as you can see, we don't seem to have these two shared parameters we added previously. That's because sometimes when you select more elements than you need, this list here will be very short because here we only display parameters that all these objects category have in common. So let's be more selective with our choices here. I'm going to go for select none and now only tick the objects categories that I want. So let's do a few like this. I'm going to go with those for now, those that are based on ceiling, like air terminals or ducts or trays. After having done this, if I go back now to the parameter menu, we now have all the common parameters of the selected categories. So here I can certainly see room name and room number, the two parameters we just added before. 
Let's go for room name for now. And the next step is to select the phase on which my required elements have been created. Let's go for new construction as well. Next step, we just have to define a few final settings before we can sync data. Firstly, whether you want to take best guess for elements without room calculation points. Let me show you what that means. If I now select one of the items here, let's go back to this air terminal now. If I now do edit family, you can see there in the family itself, there's an option called room calculation point. If I now select this, it will add into the family this point here. And this is where you can move these points to maybe define where the room detection of this object should take place. For example, if this air terminal is on the ceiling, I know the ceiling is about there, that surface should be the ceiling. So if I now drop this point just a bit lower than the air terminal, there's a good chance it's going to pick up the room here. Anyway, this is a bit hard to do if you have too many families in the model to enable the room calculation point this way. Also, as we have seen before, this wouldn't work if the room you want to detect here is from a Revit link. So in our case here, there's no point doing this anyway. Let me just go back now to the model and return to RV room link. As you can see, it has remembered our settings from before, which is nice. But more importantly, in here, if you tick this box, RV room link will calculate and create that room calculation point for you on the fly. So there's no need to edit each family of each of these categories to enable that point. By default, that point will be the centroid of the object geometry. So maybe for this air terminal here, it will be calculated at the center of the object. Of course here, that means you won't see a room for this air terminal because this point here, if at the center, will be outside of this room. That's why in here, we also have a second option and that's called the guest tolerance in millimeters. So if you want to move this automatically calculated point around until you can find a room for it, this is the value to use. If I now put in here maybe one meter, what that means is, this point here, after being calculated to be at the center of the object, RV room link will move it around in different directions until this point can be detected to be in the room. So this point here, firstly, is going to move up by one meter, move down by one meter, to the left by one meter, to the right, to the front and to the back. The movement will be by the same amount you can define here. So for ceiling equipment, I may want to go with a higher number. Let's try two meters here. This is because if the ceiling equipment is very close to the slab above, the distance from this point to where the room should be may be a bit higher than one meter. So that's why I'm going for two here. Next step, you can choose which directions that the movement of the point should be in. Usually you want to do with all six directions, but because here we're looking at ceiling equipment, let's say I have here an object close to the underside of this slab. If I have the point move down from this point, that's very good. It's going to fall inside this room here. But if I also move it up, it may end up in this room here on the upper level. And that might give me wrong room information. We don't want that. So let's clear some directions here. And actually, we only want to have the down direction in this case. So for all the ceiling equipment, the only way we want the point to be moved around is down. So that RV room link can detect any rooms below our objects. If you ever forget this, just put your mouse here and this tooltip window will show you a bit more about how it works. Next step, we can go to here. There's a box to define the value for any object without any room detected. Let's put in here, not found for now. And with this all done, I'm now ready to click on sync room data. Let's do this. Here we go, it's scanning our elements and the rooms and match them up. And now that's done very quickly. Let's do OK now and then return to our schedule. Nothing has changed here because these two parameters, we didn't touch them. Let's go back to fields and remove these two parameters. We want instead the two parameters that we created from the share parameter file. So these two here, name and number, let's bring them to the right and do OK. And straight away, you can see some big improvement 
we have here under the room name column lots of room names for example this cable tray here i can know now that it belongs to the lobby or if i go a bit down i can see my pipe elbows here are in lobby advisor conference and some other rooms of course sometimes you can see that some object cannot find a room like this one here not found that might have to do with two things firstly if i go back to rv room link Maybe this guest tolerance or offset value is not big enough. If I now extend this to maybe 3 meters and run this again, that may allow RV room link to detect more rooms for more objects because the room calculation points will be moved a bit further down to increase the chance they can hit any room below our MEP equipment. But of course, for things that are really outside of rooms, this is still expected. Not all objects in your model may have a room. But compared to the way Revit does it, this is still a great way to pair up room data from Revit Link to elements in your MEP model. Let's drive the point home by doing this one more time. But this time, let's grab the room number. I can go back to Add-ins, RV Room Link now. And this time, how about we choose the room parameter to copy from? Should be number. And the element parameter to copy to should be room number. Press sync room data again. And that has worked. As you can see there, room number is filled out just like with room name. And of course, because we didn't check all the categories, some element categories here just don't have room data. But most of the MEP elements now have some values under room number and room name columns. The great thing about this plugin is also you can keep running it whenever the architects update their Revit file. When that happens, simply update this link here and then repeat the process to update the correct parameters in your MEP file. As a bonus, you can also select more than one link here. So let's say the architects, they do one Revit model per level. You may have here architecture level one, architecture level two, architecture level three, and so on. All of those links you can also select here and then extract their room information into your MEP file in one single operation. Okay, if you want to try RV room link completely for free, simply go down to this video description and follow the link there to get your copy. Also, if you enjoy this lesson and want more like this coming every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, enjoy syncing room data quickly between the files, and I'll see you in the next video.